Hello, I'm Ron Miscavige and this is Life After Scientology. And today I have a very special guest on, which I'm actually thrilled to have her on the show. This is a, a person I've known for decades now. And uh, man, when she was small time, she's the same way now. When she's big time, she just does not talk down to anybody. She's a very approachable person and uh, a wonderful, a courageous person. I, I call her the Joan of Arc of modern times. And uh, she's a number one best-selling author on the New York Times. She, her book is Troublemaker, and you can go onto Amazon and get a copy, and I wish you would as soon as this program is over. But stay tuned because we're going to have some exciting talking going on. Anyway, um, without any further ado, let me introduce Leah Remini. Leah? Hi. There you go, kid. Thank you for that introduction. Yeah, I, I'll tell you something. I, 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 what I'd like to do, and this may sound corny, but I'm going to ask you the question anyway. And you don't have to answer it. You can say anything you want. Listen, sure. one thing about this show is this. The reason I'm doing it is I'm giving a platform to people to come on and tell their whole story. Why I say their whole story is this. I was interviewed by 2020 for over eight hours for the show they did on me. Eight hours now. I know. If I got on screen 20 minutes, that was it. And I never got my story out. It was all convoluted and shortened and truncated. And who the hell knows what, knows what I was talking about? So here you are. You can come on this and say anything you want, uh, you know, within reason. You, you can't incite to anarchy, you know, something like that. But uh, <laughs> here's the question. You grew up in Brooklyn. When you were well, first I want to say something about that, if my, if I if I may. Go on. I think it's wonderful what you're doing, and I think uh, you know Mike and I often say this: like we we don't we love that people are continuing to um, tell their stories and to continue to expose the abuses uh, and the harmful practices uh, of Scientology, and we love that. People are doing their own thing. You know, we keep saying that, like, hey, guys, you know, activate, activate, yep. activate. And so I really appreciate your writing your book, and others have written books, and, you know, everybody's kind of collectively doing this. Uh, all contributes to the mission, which is to um, not continue the hurt, not continue, not to continue to allow this very dangerous organization to operate um, under the guise of a church. And so I really appreciate what you're doing and what others are doing with their podcast. You know, you have Jeffrey Augustine, you have Chris Shelton, you, you know, Amy Scobie wrote a book, Mark Headley wrote a book, um, you know, moms who are disconnected from their children. Uh, you know, Lori's written a book about her experience losing her children to Scientology, and I just appreciate all the work that everybody is doing, and we're all part of the same team. So thank you. I appreciate that very much, Leah. And yes. uh, I know this aftermath that you and Mike are doing is just, I, I, I can't tell you how much I appreciate that because you're talking to a lot of people. You know, listen, I started this podcast about, oh, I guess in February. And we started from ground zero, and now we have right. 1,300 subscribers, and it's grown every week. That's so amazing. I, I, That's I, amazing. I appreciate the acknowledgement, but sure. take it from me. You are the Joan of Arc of modern time. You're on the cutting edge, and you have, well, I can't say the word because I try to keep this at least a little bit above board, but you sure. have the courage to do what many people wouldn't do. So now, getting back yeah. to my question. Okay. When you were a little girl, <laughs> mm -hmm. growing yeah. up in Brooklyn, did you ever conceivably think that you'd be on the cutting edge of a movement to disenfranchise a suppressive group? I mean, this is it's a hell of a thing you're doing. Well, no, the you know the indoctrination of Scientology, as with other cults, is to set up an enemy, and the enemy is the rest of the world, right? The government. Um, psychiatry, you know, so this is what, this is how cults work, right? We have the only answers to saving mankind. We have the answers for peace and harmony. We have the answers to, um, you know, cure illness, and it's us against them mentality, and that is the way uh, Scientology is set up. Of course, when you get into Scientology as a child, you know, you your parents are dictating what you are going to believe in. And then, um, even more so, um, your parents, which I think is more dangerous, which is 
this is what I'm talking about, is that Scientology then becomes your parent, and Scientology parents just stop parenting. It's what does L. Ron Hubbard say? What does L. Ron Hubbard say? And they're constantly pushing you towards scripture, right, of L. Ron Hubbard. Right? Yeah. And I use scripture very loosely. They have policies. They don't, right. I shouldn't call it scripture. Right. And all of the brainwashing begins there, and it's you know, your self-brainwashing because you have to read it yourself. You have to drill it into your own head. And we've had cult experts on our program who say it's it's even more dangerous because you're reading it yourself, which it gets into the subconscious. Yeah. Uh, very differently than when you're doing it to yourself. Yep. And that's the way Scientology is set up. So, no, I grew up thinking I was changing the world, just like you did, Ron. Like, And any Scientologist gets into Scientology thinking we're fighting the bad guys, the bad guys being everybody who isn't a yep. Scientologist. You're, you're right. No, I, that's so, no, I never thought. You know, I never thought that, you know, I would be here. I thought we were changing the world for the better. Yeah, well, I, that's you, you said a mouthful there, but it's all true because I know uh, when I got in, of course, same thing. You know, I, I got it drilled into my head, and to be honest with you, I was arrogant. I'll tell you, I had this arro oh. arrogant attitude that we were better than everybody else. And well, Ron, that's not your fault. That is the teachings of Scientology. I mean, L. Ron Hubbard says you know more than somebody with a doctorate's degree. You yeah. deserve certificates on the wall. You know more than a medical doctor. You know much more than the psychiatrist and the psychologist. You are the leaders of the world. You deserve every praise that there is to give. So you grow up with that indoctrination. This is not something you thought, Ron, just by yourself. That's not something I just thought of. Yeah. We were taught that. And then anytime you have a problem in the real world, you go to Scientology and, you know, this is an everyday brainwashing because I don't think people still understand that it's an everyday practice. It's two and a half hours a day, yeah. minimum, yeah. minimum, a day. Yeah. That, and that so when you go in, if you have a problem with somebody, you know, in a grocery store, you go to Scientology the next day and you check in, you know, it's, you know, have you been looking at anything on the Internet? Have you had any problems? And, you know, who are you talking to? Da, 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 da. And... You're like, oh, uh, yeah, I'm not upset. I just had a problem with something at the grocery store. And the response is always that those people are pieces of crap and you're a Scientologist, so why bother yep. with yep. any of that, right? So that's indoctrinated you all the time, that anybody you have a problem with, any altercation you have, any upset you have with a family member who's not a Scientologist is like, who cares? Yeah. Who cares? They're crap. They're not Scientologists. Yeah. Well, it that is true, and, and it's the everyday thing because you're expected to go on study two and a half hours a day. Minimum. Yeah, minimum. Exactly right. And then uh, as you go up the bridge, you think you're going to get this uh, superhuman quality, and uh, as a spiritual being, you can step out of your body, which, look, it is complete and utter bullshit. I mean, yeah. this is something that is done in a, a, a gradual basis, a very small gradient, because when you first go in, and maybe not with you, but maybe so. When I first got in and I did the communication course, I found that it helped me. And I thought, hey, this is some self-help that I could use, and I feel I'm getting more capable in life. And that's the of hook. Course. That's the hooks they get into you. So then you think a little later on when you get something that you think, oh, wait a minute, I don't know if I agree with that, but I'll accept it. Right. And, and at that point, you're screwed. You're screwed from right. there on out. Until right, exactly. Well, you know, let's start with Dianetics, which yeah. is the first book that everybody's forced to read, right? Yeah, right. Um, Dianetics claims, makes claims that it's a science. Dianetics makes claims that there's been studies, and uh, he, with other books, with Science for Survival and other basic books, he goes on to say that we could cure cancer, we can cure cataracts, we can cure this, we can cure that, and that all of these things stem from a, um, um, you know, a part of your subconscious mind where you have incidents of pain and unconsciousness locked and lodged into your subconscious mind, which is the reactive mind. And because of that, you have these ills right? Yep. That's, that's basically what he set up, that you have 
we are establishing in Dianetics that you have what's called engrams, and these engrams are these things that happened to you, you in your past that you are unaware of that is causing you to have these illnesses, right? Right. They set that up very early on, that you have engrams that you are unaware of, and these are the things that are causing you to react a certain way. These are things that are keeping you sick. These are things that are, you know, once, once found through dianetic processing, you will get rid of. So you'll get rid of these ailments. You'll get rid of these impulses to destroy yourself, right? Right. What's insane, what's insane is that you go through your Scientology career, which takes your whole life, basically, yep. and minimum of $300,000, and I'm being kind. Yeah. I'm being very kind about that. Yep. Um, you find out later on OT8 that none of that was true, yeah. that, you, that you had created all those engrams yourself. And I keep saying to people, isn't it crazy? You're told you have these things. You walk in going, I, wasn't, I didn't know I had these. And they're saying, yes, you do. Yes, you do. Yeah. Yes, you do. You have them, and then later, after 400,000, 300, you know, some of us in it for much more than that, you find out that you had created all of that. Yep. It's a scam. It's a fraud. And what happened is a lot of these OT8s who took, you know, who OT8 is the, the supposed to be the end of this Scientology bridge that you're forced to go through in your Scientology career, a lot of these OT8s are leaving after they accomplish OT8, after being in 35, 45 years, yeah. that's what it takes to achieve OT8, yep. leaving and going, this is a bunch of crap to their children, please stop, please don't go forward, and the children are going, sorry, mom, dad, I'm in it. And, and it, then disconnecting from their parents. Yep. I mean, it's so, you know, it's so crazy. It, it is completely and utterly insane. But I'll tell you, I give the OTH credit for having the gumption to stand in front of a mirror and look themselves in the eye and say, you know what, I got conned and right. realize it because at that point you can go free of all this bullshit. Right. Up until that point, right. if, if you keep on pretending, well, maybe I have to do the next level or maybe I have to do OT9 and OT10, which doesn't exist and we all know that. And well, no, David Miscavige, uh, your son is now creating OT9 and 10 yeah. by himself. Uh, yeah. <laughs> right. And you know, it's so weird, right, Ron, to talk to you about your son, right? Because people yeah. think, you know, that's your son. You're, you're his dad. I mean, can't you talk to him? Can't you? And, and people should understand that in Scientology, but even more so in the C organization, um, there's family is not important to Scientology. I mean, they they believe in a multiple you know lifetime. That's what they're selling. That you were, you know, like they say you were probably your mother's mother, right? You were born again into this body purposely to be back with, with yeah. your mom in Scientology, and they have these pamphlets that say we come back, welcome shipmate, you know, like they, that's what they're selling in the very beginning. Yeah. You know that you have found you have purposely found science. You were born into Scientology, you purposely picked this body to be in, back into Scientology. Yep. And so people don't really get, like, you really had, when you joined the Sea Org, and Dave Miscavige became the leader, like, he was sir to you. He wasn't your son anymore. You know what I mean? Like, he, no. there is none of that familiar, like, that, like, Shelly, your, your daughter-in-law, like, she wasn't really your daughter-in-law. She was a CEO member first, and she was COB's assistant. Yeah, l l let me just interrupt you for a second and get yeah. back to what you're saying <clears throat> about David. Sorry. Listen, when I raised David, when he was a little kid, yeah. he and I got along famously. I enjoyed his company as a person. Well, he was your son then. I know he was my son, and he had a great sense of humor. He was a little firecracker. Once he got in the Sea Org, and he got a hold of that power, he went from Dr. Jekyll into Mr. Hyde. And listen, to back up what you just said, in Scientology, it's believed that no spiritual being, or what they refer to as a thetan, mm -hmm. is the father or the mother or the son or the daughter or the brother of another one. It is a made-up claim. So when you're in the Sea Org, I was a staff member. He was my senior. I called him sir. And in his everyday doings with me, he called me Ron. Now, right, he, he called you called him sir. I mean, that's a pretty big thing, I, and people should understand that. Yeah. that is, 
You know, that is very normal. Yep. You know, you were not his dad. You nope. were his junior. Exactly. Now, one, one exception to that. On the birthday presents or Christmas presents he sent me, he would say, Dear Dad. But other than that, and this is like 99.9% .9 of my time, when he came by, I called him, Yes, sir, no, sir, and that was my experience with him. So I'm just backing up what you just said. It's so Yes, absolutely. It, it, it's absolutely. And I, and I think that people, sometimes people don't really understand that. You know, like, well, how do you not know where your daughter in law is? Like, for you, for you yeah. to ever ask, like, you would not be allowed to ask oh, anyone. If I were to say, I wonder where Shelly is, I'd be in, in the shit, as they say. In other words, I'd be in trouble. I'd, exactly. go in, I'd go in for a security check. Now, who's been asking you who, where Shelly is? Where did you get the idea that she can't be found? And a whole bunch of questions. And simply by saying, you know, I wonder where Shelly is. A simple statement like that. And Meaning, she, meaning you would be put into a, uh, an interrogation room exactly. with the Scientology meter, like lie detector, and they would be asking you these questions. Who told you she was missing? What enemy lines are you talking to? Like you would have been interrogated for simply asking where your daughter-in-law your daughter -in -law is. That's exactly right. That's how it right. was. And, and Shelly, you were good friends with Shelly, weren't you? Well, you know, per Scientology, I'm stalking her, right? I mean, she, she, you know, they're claiming that, of course, that uh, she didn't know me. Now, but Leah, you, you Leah. and I, you and I both know that, the, and and we all know that that's not true, and so does Scientology. Now, they also but, know that but that's Leah, a lie. Let me just interrupt you just for a second. Sure. You are the last person in the world I could imagine putting on a trench coat and sneaking behind some building to see where she is. That's a, such a bunch of crap. <laughs> it is unbelievable. Well, no, they're, they're, they've implied, well, I shouldn't say they implied, they have said, you know, that I filed this fraudulent uh, police report and uh, whatever they're, they've said and whatever they're going to say, continue to say, is that Shelly doesn't, she didn't know me and um, I'm trying to get ratings for the show and blah, blah, blah. Okay, usual Scientology attack. You know, now, look, Scientology, people should know that Scientology looks at an inquiry to a family member or a friend as an attack. Yep. Um, because it's just not done in the Scientology world. You know, you can know a staff member for 10, 20 years in Scientology, and then all of a sudden they've gone missing. And if you ask anyone in Scientology, hey, we're such and such, they go, they're on a mission and stop asking about them. You don't really have the rank to be asking where a senior official of Scientology is. So that is the way they view anyone inquiring. Like you don't have the right to be inquiring about a human being. Yeah. And you, Ron, you could back me up with that. There was no place that David Miscavige was in life and public in Scientology, Scientology events that Shelley was not by his side. Am I correct? Listen, not only are you correct, but when Shelly had her post, uh, let's see, it was COB assistant, mm -hmm. there was never a time I saw David on the international base that she wasn't in the car with him. I, right. would, I would go to meetings and she'd be sitting right next to him. Uh, I would go to events and she would be with him in the green room. There was never any time that she wasn't right next to him. That's my personal experience. This is not something that somebody told me. I saw that. So just to back up what you said, it's absolutely. Well, you and you and everyone else who was at the Gold Base, and you and everyone else who ever saw David Miscavige at a celebrity center in, in Hollywood event exactly at the gala, Shelley is her post in life is to be. By his side as his assistant, right, right, and, and his title that he's get, that he's given himself as chairman of the board, and her title was COB assistant, right, and she too was called sir by you and everybody else in Scientology. Yep, even public people would call her sir. Yeah. So they created they created the mystery, right? They, yeah. They've created this, as they do with everyone else. They create their own enemies, yeah. right? So Shelly, uh, again, Ron, you tell me if I'm, because, you know, you, you just tell me if I'm out of my mind. Okay. Shelly was the rare person in Scientology who was really 
um, into etiquette. Like she would read books about, you know, how to have manners, and you know, L. Ron Hubbard even wrote a policy about manners, right? And Shelley was very good about writing letters, about writing thank you notes. Like right. almost within days, you would receive some kind of card from Shelley. Uh, uh, um, Le Leah, I'll tell you how yeah. fast it was. Her, yeah. her birthday is January 18th. My birthday is January 19th. I right. would send her a birthday card on the 18th. I would get that back with an acknowledgement. Not, not the card, but I would get an acknowledgement for her right. on January 19th. Sometimes right. by noontime. It was never more than that. Right. Right. Yeah, and and, and so my history with Shelley is 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 that I mean I I've known Shelley since before my daughter was born. I have letters from Shelley saying, you know, I can't wait to meet your daughter. You know, like she's being born to a wonderful fit. Like, I so that's how long I've known Shelley. My daughter's fourteen. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ. So, so mean, meanwhile, they're it, saying you're stalking yeah. her and she doesn't know you. Okay, that's reasonable. You know. It's right, but it's then re it's now reasonable. you have the wedding of the century, which is what Scientology was trying to get it named, right? Right. Between Tom and um, Katie. Right. And they're inviting all of the top celebrities and top directors and producers, right, uh, to the wedding of the century. And this was all a PR campaign to show the world that Scientology and Hollywood are still okay, and Tom is still accepted, right? Yeah. So that's what they were, that that was really what this wedding of the century was about, Yeah, was proving to the public that Tom was still accepted. Well, you're at the wedding of the century. Where is the leader's wife? Right. Who's there with his assistant, his new assistant. Well, she's been one of his assistants, but not the main person, yeah. which is Shelley, right, Larice. And he's sitting with Larice. Isn't that crazy to people? Isn't that something that people should be going? This is very odd. Where's Shelley Miscavige? The I mean, she, David Miscavige is the best man here, and his wife is not here. Now, what you're saying is so true mm -hmm. that it would be ludicrous to think otherwise. But even right. though even though many people saw that. Who was the only person who said anything about it? Well, maybe people s thought it, but they weren't, they, they're not free enough to ask it, right? Because the punishment is so great. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, so in their defense, I understand why, consider now knowing what I had gone through because of it, yeah. <laughs> you know, because <laughs> of asking, you know, and it was quite a while, it was quite a lengthy uh, exit. It took six years for me to exit after that point, but it certainly started the ball rolling. And so in a way, I look at this whole part of my life as a blessing because had I not asked, had I not received the punishment that I received from Scientology for asking, yeah. had I not spent an enormous amount of money on me being interrogated because of those questions that I was asking, um, and you know, then coming back, uh, I was sent to uh, the hub of Scientology called Flag for my punishment and my interrogation, then eventually sent home, and then my punishment continued when I continued to ask. Um, it w I never would have left, Ron. So it, it really did open up. Yeah. J um, li listen, I, I, look I, at that. Yeah, go ahead. I, I know what you said, and I know a lot of people have. There could be yeah. new people listening to this. What exactly did you say to who? Uh, I was sitting in front of, uh, of this fireplace in this uh, castle in, in Italy, and I said, uh, hey, where's Shelly? Anybody see Shelly? And uh, it was um, Tom Davis. Right. Scattered. Um, and then the, the two uh, Dobins, the Dobins, who work for Tom Cruise. Um, also, you know, high high ranking, just public Scientologists. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and, and they scattered, and uh, they eventually wrote reports on me, which was funny, right, is that they never wrote reports on that, but they got together and they did this little thing what that Scientology does, which is a witch hunt. They say, hey, if you ever, did you observe Leah Remini doing anything inappropriate mm -hmm. at the wedding that was causing bad PR for Scientology? So that's what they did. They wrote these reports 
about me having bad manners <laughs> and okay. being a bad example. Yeah. yeah. Meanwhile, what did Tom Davis say when you said to him, "Hey, where's Shelley?" Well, he said, "I don't have the F and rank," but he also, but also Javier Ruiz also said that to me when I called him. I had so so come back right. So now I had come back from flag saying, okay, I didn't see any of this. I, I was bad because I wasn't allowed to leave until I said that I yeah, I, didn't I, see any of the things that I observed, right? Because yeah. I had written. Now, now, Ron, understand that when I, was, when I was sent to flag, I was still thinking that there were people watching David Miscavige because L. Ron Hubbard had set up the organization so that not one person was in power, right? There was the Watchdog Committee right. and another you know, other other kind of organizational um, checkpoints that were supposed to be watching David Miscavige. But David Miscavige had taken these elements out, so he was the only person yep. in charge, right? Absolutely. Now, but I'm naive. Now, I'm naive, right? I'm at the wedding calling somebody in L.A. who was also, you know, uh, who was my best friend at the time, but also um, a Scientologist, right, who had a lot of, like, training in Scientology technology, and I was telling her what was happening at the wedding, and she's writing Scientology reports on my behalf. Oh, boy. Okay? And I'm thinking that I'm going to save Scientology, because I'm like, I found it. I found the why of why Scientology is going off the rails. It's David Miscavige and Tom Cruise. These two are bona fide suppressive persons. Like, yeah. they are textbook. <laughs> so I'm like, <laughs> I'm thinking I'm saving Scientology, right? Yeah. Uh, I'll tell you, I, I love you, bitch. You're, you're writing your own death sentence, you know that. <laughs> right. And that's why they said, get this girl to flag yeah. and sex check her and interrogate her. And so they would not let me leave until I said, okay, 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 I, you know, I surrender. I yeah. said, I didn't see any of those things. David yeah. Miscavige is amazing, and Shelly's not missing, and okay, I, gi I give yeah. up. I give up. Yep. They let me come home, and then quieted me down, right, a little bit, right? So yeah. I was refusing to go back into counseling, but I was agreeable to train into Scientology, that I would be trained right. in Scientology technology. And my thought was, well, I need to understand the technology before I could actually help, and i got to see what's going down here, how this went down with Dave Miscavige, how he was able to do this. Yeah. And so that was kind of like what I was doing. I was like, I'm going to train in Scientology. Yeah. And that's what I was doing for a couple of years, and then it blew up again. It blew up again because Katie ended up leaving. And I was like, okay, now this, again, is insanity. Yeah. If Katie, it, Tom continues to make a bad name for Scientology technology, he can't stay married, he can't keep a girl, you know what I mean? Like, this is not an example of Scientology. Right. And so I started again looking on the Internet, and the Debbie Cook email, and I was like, oh, okay, all these beatings are going on. And where is Shelly still? Three years later, they're telling me she's on a mission. Yeah. And no communication. I'm like, what? So are her fingers broken? Yeah. Is her mouth broken? Can she speak to somebody who can dictate a freaking letter to me? I don't understand. It makes no sense. Yeah, I, I got and it, And again, man. I was getting... Stop talking about, as a matter of fact, my own auditor, my own counselor, pulled me aside. He pulled me outside the building once, and he said, you need to stop asking about Shelly. Wow. You're only causing yourself more pain. And I said, Todd, I know you love Scientology. You've tried to help me, and, and I love you, and I, I like, love you as a person because yeah. you, are, you are down for L. Ron Hubbard, and I love you for that. But, honey, you're contributing to a criminal organization if you continue to be here and be a CEO member. Like, you cannot. He was m my auditor as well, Katie's. <laughs> wow. Yeah. And this is Todd Woodruff. And I go, Todd, Todd, please, you have to do something. You cannot. This is keeping Scientology working. Read your own policies. What does L. Ron Hubbard say on point seven, eight, nine, and 10, my love? You have to apply your own technology. You have to take a stand. And he's like, Lee, I cannot. Please stop doing this. Please wow. stop doing this. And then you know that Todd was kicked out of the Sea Org. He's still a Scientologist, and then he did a hate video about me. Wow. On the Scientology website. Now, I know Todd is a good person, and I know that he really doesn't mean me any harm, but 
people just have to stop agreeing. Like, you're not going to make change within. Nope. You're just not going to. And these fringe people need to start getting some damn courage yeah. and going, well, we just need to walk away. We just need to walk away because you're contributing to it, right? And so even Todd told me to stop asking about it. And I said, I can't. I can't stop asking. This, this, this now with all the beatings that I'm hearing about, these all can't be liars. You guys are attacking these people. These were senior executives yeah. of Scientology. Now you're calling them suppressive people. Really? They were with these 20, 25 people who were in the Sea Org for 40 freaking years? Yeah. They were suppressive people, and they got past your radar? Really? Yeah. No, you so I called Javier Ruiz, who was a senior executive at Arthur Services, right? Right, right, right. At ASI, which is a senior organization in Scientology. Of course, yeah. Who was married to Barbara Ruiz, who yep. was best friends with Shelley Miscavige. Right? Oh, yeah. I called him, and I said, Javier, do you know where Barbara is? Well, I'm not in the Sea Org anymore, Leah. I said, well, we're, I didn't know that. He goes, yeah. You know, they shipped me off to another country. Did anybody care that I went missing? And I said, well, I had no idea. I wasn't close with you. Like, I was with that. You know what I mean? So now he's a civilian Scientologist. And I said, but you don't care where you where Barbara is? You were married to her for 25 years, have you? He goes, no, I don't care. Wow. I said, oh, okay. Well, Shelly's missing, and there's all these things about people being beaten at goal. I mean, like, do you care, Javier? And he goes, well, are you asking, this is literally what he said to me, are you asking Hav, the Sea Org member, or Hav, your friend? I go, well, I don't give a shit who I'm asking, just answer the question. And he said, well, as Javier, um, a former Sea Org member, I say, you don't have the effing right to ask about Shelly Miscavige or Barbara Ruiz. Wow. And then he wrote an internal report on me and accused me of mutiny and accused me of trying to start a splinter group. Which is insanity. Insanity. Yeah. And that and by the way, people should know that that's a, there's a policy you know that's covered the, that these points are covered in um, suppressive acts. And these are the points they were accusing me of. It is I'll tell you something. That group is so insane, they, they can't see it. They, they live in their own bubble of, they're, they live in a parallel universe that is like. Uh, well, remember, uh, Ron, we, we, were, we were indoctrinated to believe that anybody in the outside world yeah, was I a. I know, but for Christ's well, sake. You know, anybody committing these, these, these sins, these high crimes per Scientology, I mean, these are called high crimes in Scientology, right? right Calling the right. police. You know, asking about, you know, trying to, uh, you know, talking about Scientology derogatory to the press. These are all high crimes in Scientology, right? Yes. Now, people who commit these high crimes in Scientology are called psychotic, sociopaths, yep. likened to Hitler and Dillinger and Stalin. Yeah. So these people believe that you, me, people like us are... Hitlers of the world, like they—that's yeah. who they're liking us to. Yeah, I, I know that, and and they've so lost. So the attack, so the attack doesn't mean anything. Our, you know, wishing us death is like, yet yeah, they would celebrate our death. I know they would. Yeah. <laughs> See, they've they've lost their powers of observation, and they're yeah. trapped by their own indoctrinated mind that was put there not only by Scientology, but by themselves by continuing right. on this path of Never Never Land. I mean, you're walking down, you're like a fucking hamster in a cage that's spinning the wheel. You're going nowhere. I mean, maybe... Well, in your defense, Ron, in your defense and people who are at Gold or people who are in the Sea Org, well, specifically at Gold and Air Productions yeah. up in Riverside County, uh, California, they have no internet access. Nope. They have no cell phones. They have no access to the outside world. Not only that, listen, if you make a phone call, people listen in on the other end. And I yes, just, I no found letters in, no letters no. out without being looked at, if they even get out. I, I found out uh, after I left that even the, the, the switchboard operator would listen in on the first part of your conversation and write a report on what you talked about. I mean, mm -hmm. it was that bad. This, this is like Nazi Germany, except, you know, we're not throwing people into a, a, a gas oven or anything. But it, it is... Very bad for this organization to continue. And 
I agree. Yeah. And you know, and, and for for your members who are you know maybe not you know in that prison with guards and and all that stuff as they are in gold, you know now you're dealing with the prison of belief, which is a great exactly great saying because they you know people ask us all the time. Well, I thought they were not allowed to be on the internet. Well, they're not allowed to be on the internet. That is anything anti. Mm -hmm. Uh, well, I shouldn't say anti, uh, that's speaking the truth about Scientology, right? And yeah. because you have to go in every day and confess your sins every single day, Scientologists are indoctrinated into believing that it is a sin to look on the Internet about anything that's telling the truth about Scientology. So they consider that a transgression, and they have to pay for that. You know, they have literally and figuratively. Like, yeah. it costs them money to have to confess their sins, and then they're put on a program to make right that they looked on the internet about anything or watch you know our show or watch going clear or listen to your podcast or whatever anything that is not pro Scientology they consider that a sin and part of the making the amends would be to contribute to their building projects or the IAS you, you realize right. that oh it's always money yeah, yeah it, it's, it's always, always money, money. So getting back to Javier Ruiz, do do you know where Barbara Ruiz is? Nope. No, nor do I, and I I often wondered about that. But we were talking. And nor do I know again if Shelley is okay, if Shelley's even alive, if I I, I still don't have that answer. Ron. What what exactly did the L.A. police say to you in response to your putting in the missing persons thing? Um, well, first they told me that I couldn't, <laughs> well, they released a statement, like, within hours, that this report was unfounded. Now, Scientology uses that word, unfounded, uh, to their benefit, and, of course, they are twisting it to serve their own agenda. Unfounded, they only have two categories of which to put a report in. So right. it doesn't mean that it was unfounded under the circumstances of which I filed, I right? Got it. Yeah, yeah. But Scientology is using that to twist it to make it sound like I I filed a fraudulent report, just just to do it. No, it's because I had told Scientology for six years that if I don't get an answer, and you know every couple of years I you know try again, or I send I have sent letters throughout that time. I had not just. It wasn't like I just sent one letter and I was just forgot about her. Yeah. I continued to send letters, thinking those letters were getting to her. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, so they something would happen where they go, oh, okay, well, uh, Shelly's on a mission where she can't be contacted. So that was like the first kind of thing. And I was like, okay, yeah, I don't really know how missions work in Scientology, so I don't know if she's well, on yeah, a confidential yeah. mission. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. And then, you know, stop asking about it. You know, she will contact you. I was like, okay. But, you know, time goes on. You Time goes so fast, you don't realize, right? Yeah, oh, yeah. Uh, so th so I was writing her letters throughout all those all that time, thinking that she was at least receiving them. Yeah. Um, I later found out that those letters were never sent to her. No, of course because not. Because they, they were considered um, inappropriate. Yeah. Why were they considered inappropriate, Ron? Because I said things like, I, you know, if you're divorced, then it's like the church doesn't want to say that, or are you being held? Here's my cell phone number in case you need me. You know, this was all being seen as inappropriate to Scientologists. I never sent those letters. Well, actually, you're, you're trying to help her. I mean, that's the whole purpose of your sending it, as far as I can tell. But remember, I don't know at the time anything that's going on at Gold. I don't really know that they're opening her letter. I don't, you know what I'm saying? I'm still yeah. seeing her as a senior executive of Scientology I, who would ever it. read COB assistance mail. You know what I'm saying? I don't even know this stuff is going on. I got it. That it's possible. Yeah. That it's even possible that this is happening. You know what I mean? So it, it just, it takes time, you know, for the blinders to come off fully, you know. No, yeah, well, I do know that. And I'm that. completely naive, thinking, yeah. you know, that that's, it's Scientology that is pure, and it's Dave Miscavige that is crazy. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so I just have to get him out of the picture, you know. I didn't realize, too, that Scientology was not, it was ex exactly, he was following L. Ron Hubbard's policies. <laughs> yeah, it, it is true. I mean, L. Yeah. Ron Hubbard was, he could, 
actually probably the greatest con man who ever lived. I could tell you I that. I agree. And, and, and brilliant at yeah. the same time, obviously, to have created this, this dynamic, right? Yeah, this, because this dynamic look at, uh, institution that has amassed $3 billion in assets. Um, but this uh, attack policy and destroy utterly anyone who speaks up and out about Scientology is L. Ron Hubbard policy. Yep. And he had set this up in the 50s when the government was after him, and people started going, hmm, what is this cult? And that's when he was like, oh, I have to – first he tried to uh, 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 write the uh, American Psychiatric Association, right? He tried to get in with them knowing this might be the successful group. And when they rejected him, that's when he decided to write all these policies against um, psychiatry and right. make them their enemy. And then when the government started going after him, then he started with all these policies about anti-government, anti-police, anti-anyone who isn't us. So, you know, this is all – people should look all this up because I don't want to be the one to say it and just think it's my opinion. These, this is actually um, no. very factual. But anyway, back to, to what we're talking about with Shelley, the, the – uh, so they had come out with that in, within hours, right? But no one had contacted me. And mm. so I called the uh, detective who was supposedly in charge of my case, although he wasn't even mentioned on, the, on my police report. And uh, he told me he can't give me any information. Wow. I said, okay. I said, like, are you crazy? Like, is, is, am I crazy or are you crazy? I'm the one who filed the police report. How are you telling me you can't give me any information? He said, all I can tell you is that contact has been made. I said, I understand. With a lawyer? With Shelly? Did you see her? Did you give her my letter? Because I had given a letter with my police report. I, I'm not understanding. Please help me to understand. He said, I can't give you any more information than that. If you want to press this further, you can file um, information through the Public Information Act, blah, blah, blah. Ron, I did all that. It cost me thousands and thousands of dollars to do this, and I was still stonewalled in the end. Wow. So I don't even know that she – still, like I said, don't know that she's factually alive. Don't know that even if she is alive, I don't know that she's not being held against her will. I don't know that she had been seen without her handlers. Uh, so I don't really know any of these details. Right. Well, the only thing and I – Other than – yeah. Hire another lawyer and get into this probably would cost me millions. There's really nothing else that I can do. And you would be stonewalled with every asset the church has to get that answer. You know that. I don't have Scientology money like that. You know what I mean? <laughs> like yeah, I, I mean, they, they, I'm they, trying to do the right thing by a person, a human being. I do know that. And... Yeah. Other people need to get active about it. Now, I understand that her remaining family are in Scientology, and they are fully aware that if they, ha if they go outside the boundaries of Scientology policy by inquiring, by filing a police report, Scientology will see that as an attack on them. Yep. And they will treat that person as an enemy. Yep. And if Shelley is alive and being held against her will, or Shelley's alive and thinking she's there on her own determinism, they will have no hope of hearing from her Yep. if they file a police report. Nope, you're exactly right. And you're yep. doing it out of the goodness of your heart to help another human being. And the church is doing it out of what they consider to be the greatest good for the greatest dynamics. In other words... What would people think of the Church of Scientology if something like this come out? So everything is done to protect the farce. It's all done to protect the man behind the the cl uh, the big dra right. drapes, no. you know, pulling yes, the fucking exactly. levers, you know. But now let's remember too that Shelley Shelley was raised in Scientology, yeah. right? Not only was she raised in Scientology, but Elmer Hubbard was like her surrogate father. Yeah, I know that. Yeah. Yeah. And so she has tremendous loyalty to L. Ron Hubbard. Now, yep. I don't know if she is alive and well, that she would think that her only chance to save Scientology is from within. But she doesn't have the power to do that. Nope. If David Miscavige is hiding her away at a secured base with handlers and yeah. people watching her, she can't. There's no way for her to make any change. No one's going to. 
I mean, Shelly could start a mutiny, and she could have what she wanted. Yeah. Which is to save Scientology and to save the legacy of Elron Hubbard. But she has no power to do that. No. Within. Within. No, and, and not, not to uh, mention uh, Shelly has witnessed all of the abuse. Yep, I know that. And also, for, if she were to try to walk out of... See, I understand that she's at the Big Bear Complex where uh, CST has a base. So that's where, you th that's where you think she is? Well, I got that from a person who told me that's where my presence went when I sent them to her. And he's left Scientology, and he, he worked in RTC in the communications office. And okay, he, and it, that is in, in uh, this like is, an arrowhead somewhere, the yeah, CST it, exactly. building? Yeah, okay. exactly. Or the property now. This this is from what I understand. The CST is again in a an area that you can't really get to, right? I mean, you can get to it, but you, there's guard gates. You can't. Yeah. You can't stop even in front of the place, right? Now, what I was going to say was that there are security guards that would physically grab her if she tried to make a run for it, and there's no. Shelley is a fragile person. She's mm -hmm. she's not like a, you know, like these female mixed martial arts guys. I mean, she's thin, and she would be snatched up and, and seized and, and put back in her prison. Right. And, and, uh, and, and then there's the her completely been disconnected from the real world for how many years now has it been? Well, right? so she I, doesn't I, know anything that's going on out here. 2005 was the last I heard from her. So right. we're talking about 10, 13 years. Right, right. No, she doesn't. And, and, and also, too, it's like because she has no idea what's going on, in her mind, maybe what she's doing now is um, the only thing she can do, right? Now, I heard rumors as well that she was seen at her father's funeral, that she was released to and, 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 um, and, and uh, escorted to her father's funeral. Right. And then brought right back. That I heard and also. Now, if that were true, Ron, maybe you could explain a little bit why at that moment in time um, she would not make a run for it. Well, she absolutely would have handlers. Mm -hmm. And I, it, I, I, I can tell you this. In her mind, I'm sure, well, as I'm as sure as I could be, that she feels... She doesn't want to do anything to hurt Scientology. I think in her heart, she still believes that L. Ron Hubbard was like a messiah and a special person. Because right. as you pointed out, she basically was raised in a Sea Org. She w went in right. as a little girl. I, I don't know if you know this, Shelley, but at one point, her parents put her and her sister in an orphanage. Did you know that? I didn't. I just, I just know that, that yeah. Shelley was basically given to the ship, the Sea Org, yeah, yeah. and L. Ron Hubbard and was on a ship yeah. um, by herself and, and uh, at a very early age. And, you know, like I said in the yeah. beginning, Ron, Scientology willfully gives up their children to the Sea Organization and then signs over uh, consent of, of guardianship to whoever they say, okay, this one's in charge of your kid now. And they become their guardian yep. and basically give up their parental rights. And Scientologists are very proud to do that because Scientology Sea Org has been set up as like a military operation with uniforms and bullshit yeah. and lanyards and calling people sir and using, you know, military um, type nomenclature as the Sea Org, you know, building blocks, right? Yeah. And oh, yeah. um, given these titles that are bullshit. And so, you know, Scientology is, is, is set up as, you know, this is, you're, you're sacrificing your child to clear the planet, and yeah. Scientology parents are happy to do so. And those Scientology parents actually believe that. I know. Listen, I believed it when I was in. I'll, I'll tell you I right know. up. I mean, I, I thought I'm doing the greatest good for mankind by doing this. Right. But I'll right. tell you this. As the years went by, I did not lose my powers of observation. And I saw, saw stuff going on, and I thought, hey, wait a minute. There's no way I'm going to spend the rest of my life living this way. Because right. it became intolerable at that base. Just right. absolutely, you, you just couldn't live under those. Listen, I've always been somewhat of a free spirit. Well, listen, per Mo Monique Gingling, the, the high-powered lawyer for Scientology, it's a, it's a worker's paradise. They have a bakery. 
I mean, she walked. She had the balls to walk into the the 2020 interview uh, with Dan Harris, right? With yeah. uh, with uh, Baker, with Baked Goods from the Golden Era Productions. Uh, and and, and guess guess what? what? The the Camille and the people working in the galley were they spent an entire day, 24 hours straight, baking those things to make sure they were absolutely perfect. And their lives were on the line if somebody said, eh, these don't taste that good. I guarantee you, that was not just an act of kindness. That was, it, well, it was foolish, let's face it. You, you go to a meeting and you bring muffins. What the hell is this? Come on. It's, it's insanity. I mean, yeah. it's insanity. And she should be ashamed of herself, but she isn't. She's no. making has made millions and millions and millions of dollars defending this cult, and she's yeah. well aware of what's really going on. And I just, I don't know, again, I might be still naive in, in kind of coming out into the real world. I just, I'm like, aren't there decent people, you know, who are lawyers who just say, I'm going to, I can't do this anymore, I can't say these things anymore, I can't write these letters anymore, this is just wrong these people are telling the truth. You know, I still believe that, Ron. You yeah. know what I mean? I still believe, you know, that people, even in Scientology, will say, why is Leah considered a suppressive person for speaking out against the abuses and letting these people tell their stories? That, you know, these are truths. These are not, you know, watch the show. These are not lies. Yeah. They know it. If, if Scientologists watch the show... You see, you you see the basic thing that they're doing, Ron, is they attack, right? They everybody says the same thing, from Kirstie Alley to every celebrity bullshit Scientologist saying those are lies. Okay, what lies are we telling? Yeah. What lies? Okay. Now they never it. they never say what we're you know saying like so. They just attack. They're lying. They're apostates. They they just want their five minutes of fame. They all say the same friggin' script. Yeah. What are we lying about? If we were lying, you would have sued us a long time ago. Yeah, you're right. Hey, listen, talking about your yeah. show, you have another uh, season coming up. We have another season coming up where we once again um, are exposing, like the things we're talking about now, we're talking about Shelley, uh, we're talking about some other uh, executives um, that we have reports are, are still being abused at the, the, the golden era uh, paradise that Monique Yingling said it was. Yeah, it, w it was a paradise. If you yeah, want to live in, 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 in like yeah. a gulag in Russia, in you know when yeah. Russia was the Soviet Union, that, that's that's the paradise. You know, substandard food. Uh, you can't write a letter out without it being written. You can't get letters in without them being written. You can't go to a store. Oh, that's a real paradise. I enjoy being a fucking slave. Come on. No, and then listen. And get real, way, Ron. This this is what we really we're getting at. You know, we're really getting at why. Let Let's forget about the church that it calls itself a church. Yeah. That that. Okay, fine. You want to believe in what you you want to believe in body thetans, and you want to believe that you're going to be your kid's kid next lifetime. You want to believe that you have powers to you know cure yourself of cancer and all that stuff. What we're saying is that the abusive practices of Scientology should not have they should not be allowed to have tax exempt status, and we're laying out a case uh, for the for our audience, but as well the government agencies who need to start taking a real look at why. You know, listen, we're not lawyers. We're not, you know, <laughs> we, we, we can only present the case to the world of these abuses are going on under the guise uh, of religion, and you want to call yourself a church, fine, but you should not have tax exempt status where you are uh, fraudulently uh, taking people's money and their lives taking away their children, trying to bully them into silence by having millions and millions and millions of dollars, $3 billion to be exact, in assets to abuse and harass people into silence. They've been doing this since 1955, right? Like yep. fair game has been in practice since, it's, since L. Ron Hubbard wrote it, and they continue, I mean, even throughout our filming, you know, our yeah. contributors are being followed. They're launching these, in, you know, quote unquote investigations. They have people showing up in people's parking lots, you know, trying to scare them. They continue to hire private investigators to pretend to be uh, reporters, saying, "Oh, we're investigating this person uh, for abuse and sexual allegations." This is all part of Scientology policy on fair game. Yep. 
and uh, they continue to do it, and they should not be doing this under uh, the First Amendment or the protection of the First Amendment. Yeah. Well, and no. So that's kind of what we're going to be exposing. Well, you're, you're, it's true you're not lawyers, but I can tell you what you are. You and Mike are two very, very decent people who care about mankind and about bullshit like this that goes on by a suppressive group, and you you have the guts to do something about it, and I admire the hell out of you for this, Leah. i got to tell you. And Thank I, you. I, I, again, we, and listen, and we give it up to you guys. Listen, you were willing to come on and speak, and you were willing to go out there and speak, and you and Becky... Yeah. And many and many before us have, yeah. were willing to speak. They didn't have a platform to do so, so they found it. They found a way to tell their stories, knowing that Scientology was coming after them with their fair game policy. Yeah. And they still spoke out. So it's really not because of me and Mike, but it's because of people like you, Ron, and our contributors of the show who are willing to come on, knowing that when the cameras stop rolling, when they go home, they're going to have private investigators at their door harassing them, going to their work, trying to get them fired. Why? Because this is Scientology policy. Yep. And that's what we're trying to, again, say. But listen, it has been worse this season than any other season uh, for us and for our contributors. They are, they are um, kind of dialing up the attacks and that they're going after people who are not used to this. Yeah. They are going after people who are just good men and women who are saying, listen, I wasn't a Scientologist, but I was willing to speak out. Yeah. Or <laughs> I, I want to know where my family member is after watching Going Clear and listening to what happened to everyone at the Gold Base, and I have a family member up there. Yeah. And they're getting stonewalled again, and then they're getting attacked by Scientology. And this is happening every day, Ron. Yeah. Every day that we have filmed the show, there has been some kind of attack from either Scientology OSA yeah. or just regular parishioners that they're activating to attack, or NPIs. Wow. Yeah. Well, I, I'll tell you, I, I'll accept your compliment. Please accept mine. And I, okay. I, I, I can, Thank you. <laughs> okay, Leah, just as a yeah. little, little thing for my listening audience, I do not have a sponsor. As a matter of fact, I tell you, I actually don't want a sponsor. And I'll tell you why. I don't want anybody to come on and tell me, you can't talk this way, you can't say this, you can't say that. I want to keep on providing this program for people who, mm -hmm. who can come on and tell their story without me jumping down their throat or denigrating them or saying, oh, I don't know about that. Mm -hmm. So because of that, I, am, I have this thing called Patreon. So anybody out there who would like to contribute, you can become a Patreon for as little as a dollar and you can contribute something to this ongoing show. But no matter what, I'm going to keep on going because as far as I'm concerned, the only time you fail is when you quit, and I'm never right. going to quit, and I know you will never quit until we have a victory here, Leah. Exactly, exactly. And, 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 and I want to say that everybody doing their small part, you know, they can't take for granted what, what they can do. You know, often people feel powerless going up against the Goliath, uh, and I'm not just talking about the cult of Scientology. I'm talking about other things. Yep. There are things people can do. The power is and always has been with the people. The people make change. Yep. And I don't care what your financial position, you can make a change by who you elect uh, to represent you. Yep. You need to look at who supports this organization and and cults like it. Yep. And everyone can do their part by making sure they they don't listen to and agree with abusive Scientology policy by telling their story, by finding out if their family member's okay. You have every right to do a wellness check. You have every right to find out where your family member is. You could demand that they talk to you. You can demand that they meet you for a cup of coffee. There's little things that people can do, and people ask us that all the time. What can we do? Yep. These are things you can do. You can uh, contact the IRS and say, we want to look into their having tax-exempt status, because you could still be a church and not have tax-exempt status. They don't, they don't do anything for the public. They no. don't provide a service to the public. Not anything. In any way, yeah, well, they don't uh, give to the poor. They hold don't it, to the hold homeless. it. They you're, don't do anything. Leah, Leah, you're wrong on that. 
they provide yeah. abuse to the public. So there you go. I mean, let's let's give them credit for that, all right? Well, they shouldn't have tax exempt status for that. Yeah. You know, uh, the agree. IRS has <laughs> paved the way for these abuses to continue. I know. By uh, having them protected under the First Amendment, you know, this just has to stop. This just yeah. has to stop. And people have to start looking. And people can do their part, Ron. They could just do their part. Yeah. And even supporting, like you're saying, supporting you, supporting this podcast, supporting yeah. the show supporting people who contribute to our show just by giving them love on social media, knowing that they're going to get a hate site, you know, or a PI at their door. Yeah. If you're a private investigator and, you know, get in touch with your integrity that you once had and go, I'm not going to take a job for Scientology. I'm not going to harass people who are telling the truth. I'm not going to do that. If you're a police officer, I, I know it's a nice chunk of change, but you, you, you shouldn't be doing yeah. work for uh, an abusive organization that's hurting people. Yeah. I don't care how much they're paying you. I couldn't agree with you, you know? more, Leah. I couldn't agree with you more. Yeah, so there's things that people can do. You know, there's things that people can do, and, and, and people are doing it, Ron. I just want people to know that they have the power. They have the yeah. power, and they shouldn't be in apathy about the, in, in our current climate. You know, we should all be speaking up and speaking out and doing our part. Leah. And I, and I, and I want to say thank you to, to those who already are and already have. Well, I want to thank you for coming on the show because I'm really thrilled to have you on as my guest. And I'm, I'm thrilled to to be on it. You have always been one of my favorites. You know, even like when we were in when on the when I would see you at Celebrity Center or at, at, at one of the events. You know, I just Angela and I just just loved you. You know, <laughs> and you were like one of those rare people. You know, just as with Shelley, she was a rare person in Scientology. Yeah. Who was human, and you knew you could go to her if things got tough. And yeah. You know, because of Shelley's love for Alvin Hubbard, you knew that if things went really wrong, you can go to Shelley and say, Shelley, things are going bad. You know, they're not applying this policy right. And, yeah. you know, I need help. And, you know, Shelley was always there. So, you know, I have every right. I'm going to continue to ask about Shelley. And, you know, people want to know. People, because they see an injustice. You can't just take a human being and disappear them and think that's okay. You no. see, in David no. Miscavige's mind, it's very okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it is. And we're saying, no, it isn't okay. Yep. So just because I'm not continuing in that way doesn't mean I'm not continuing behind the scenes yep. to continue to locate her and to make sure that she's okay. Okay. Leah, okay. thank yes, you Linda. Thank you very much. My and pleasure, Ron, yep. anytime. Okay, and uh, I am Ron Miscavige. This is Life After Scientology. I'll see you on the next podcast.